Hi all, welcome back to Software Engineering course. Let's get started. In last class, we had studied about different styles of CNCV. We had seen pipe and filter, shared data, and client server. We will continue our discussion with the same. Today, we will see about the other styles of the same CNC view that is publish subscribe style. The second one is peer to peer style or object oriented style. And the last one is communicating process styles. So, altogether, we have six different styles for CNC view. Okay. The first one is publish subscribe. So, here there are two components one is publish, it will generate or publish the events and the other one is subscribe so what it will do this component subscribe component it subscribes to a set of defined events now in response to these events the components that have published their intent to the process the event are invoked the events could be your mouse click and components are assigned to those mouse click okay so when an event occurs the associated component is executed as in case with most connectors it is the task of runtime infrastructure to ensure that this type of connector that is publish subscribe is supported we can see this uh, style as a special case of blackboard style except that we do not have the re repository concept here okay next one is peer to peer style or object oriented style so if we take the client server style and generalize each component to be a client as well as server then we have this style the components are peers okay so we had seen the client server style right so suppose this is a client and this is a server and it was communicating the client was sending the request to server and server was responding it uh, responding for the client now in peer-to-peer -peer style or object oriented style what happens is each component will act as a client as well as server that means this could act as client and server and this server can act as server and client both the features are given to the components like one will act uh, all the, the all the components which are connected to each other will act as a client as well as server so components we call here uh, you know peers and any component can request a service from any other component the object oriented computation model it requires i mean it represents this style so if we view the components as objects and connectors as method invocation then we have this peer to peer style getting it the next one is communicating process style so this is the oldest model of distributed computing now communicating process style it tries to capture the model of computing the components in this model are we, uh, we call the components in this model as threads threads or processes now these processes or the threads they communicate with each other with a message passing or through shared memory this style is used in some uh, you know some form in many complex system which use multiple processes or threads next you have a quiz so the question is how many connector type are present in client server style you have got two minutes
Okay, time up. Next, we will see how to document this architecture design. So far, uh, we discussed like representing the views through the diagrams. So these diagrams are, you know, a good way to explore options and uh, encourage disc uh, discussion or brainstorming between the architects. So when the designing is over, the architecture, it has to be communicated to proper stakeholders and why it, why it has to be, you know, communicated because for the agreement and negotiation. So the, this requires that the architecture is to be documented properly with enough information so that different stakeholders can see this document architecture or uh, see the architecture document have a knowledge about uh, the, without a properly documented description of the architecture so it is not possible to have a clear or common understanding so documenting your architecture is important as if you are creating one you have to create the architecture and you have to maintain it, document it properly. So, just like different projects require different views, just like different projects require different types of view, your different projects will need different level of detail in their architecture documentation. So, whenever you are documenting the architecture, it should have the system and architecture context. Second, the description of the architecture views. The third across view documentation so we'll see this one by one so we know that the architecture for the system is driven by the system objective and it needs and the needs of your client or the stakeholders so the first aspect in that architecture document it should contain the identification of the stakeholders and their concerns now the first portion it give uh, it should give an idea of overview of the system like different uh, stakeholders the system properties for which the architecture will be evaluated a context diagram it establishes the scope of the system its boundaries the actors that interact with the system sources sinks of the data can also be very useful a context diagram is frequently it is represented by showing the system in the center and its connection with the people including sources and sinks of the data so I guess you remember what is a context diagram. We had studied it, uh, studied this in the last chapter. Okay, so this context diagram would be useful in the initial stage of architecture. So once you have defined the context of uh, your uh, system, or say suppose once you have uh, given all the requirements and the architecture, the overview is done. The next thing is describing the different structures or describing the views. So multiple views of different types may be needed so we had seen different types of views right so the uh, multiple uh, different types of that can be needed so which type of view is needed it would be based on your project as well as its stakeholders the description of the views in the architecture documentation it will almost always contain a diagrammatic representation of a view which is we sometimes call it as primary presentation of the view in any of the view diagram so you have different symbols and different element types coming in right so we should have different types of components uh, we should represent them using some symbols and these symbols should be unique and it should be clear to the reader it should not uh, using a component should not cause any confusion to your stakeholders okay Say suppose uh, whenever you are drawing the architecture, you have uh, the complexity, say suppose it increases. Then what you can do is instead of having one architecture, you can divide it and you can have a hierarchical approach. So, okay. Now uh, we had seen like uh, the overview of the architecture, like the first one, the uh, context, once context, uh, context is defined, then you have the architecture view. So once the view is represented, how you can maintain the document right now say suppose these all things whatever we talk it only discussed about the diagrams only pictures right so every time you know the hundred percent pictorial representation is not complete description of the view the diagrams or the pictures it gives you a basic idea of the design but only if you provide uh, only the diagrams it is not sufficient you should provide some other details 
say for example the purpose of the functionality of a module or a component is indicated by only its name which is not sufficient okay whenever you want to you know you have a say suppose uh, uh, for example you have library management system and you have uh, developed an architecture for that say you have given search as one functionality say in use case diagram or in dfd you have just mentioned search now what should that do right so you should also give apart from your architecture uh, apart from the diagrams you have to give supporting documentation so what are the supporting documentation uh, for these view diagrams so your supporting documentation it should contain or it uh, it should contain some of the following or all of the following so those things are the element catalog architecture rationale behavior and other information we'll discuss this one by one now what is the element catalog it provides the information about the elements shown in the representation primary representation or your view okay so it uh, you know besides describing the purpose of the element it should also describe the elements interfaces all the different interfaces provided by the elements should also be defined so interfaces should have a unique identity and the specification should give both syntactic and semantic information syntactic information uh, such as your uh, signatures which describe all the data items involved in the interface and their types semantic examples uh, like what the what does the interface do okay and it should also give the description about um, state of the error conditions suppose if uh, interface whenever it is communicating some error happens error occurs what should be done even that should be present in your element catalog the second one is architecture rationale so it gives the relationship between the elements it does not provide any insight into why the architect chose that particular structure okay now your architecture rationale it gives the reason for selecting different elements and composing them in the way it was done okay the next one is behavior so your view or the uh, pictorial representation it gives you a structural information it does not uh, represent the actual behavior or execution so in a structure all possible interaction during the execution are shown sometimes it is necessary to get some idea about the actual behavior of the system in some scenarios say suppose um, um, say it's a deadlock what should be done the behavior of your system should be uh, in the in the case of deadlock should be written down properly okay the last one is other information so this section may include a description of all those decisions that have not taken and that have not been taken during the architecture creation but but they have been you know purposely left for the future such as the choice of the protocol or choice of server etc okay so your architecture document it should you know besides describing the view it should also describe the relation between different types of view this is the primary purpose of a cross view documentation next we will study how to evaluate the architectures your architecture of a software system it impacts some of the non functional quality attributes of the system such as performance modifiability reliability portability etc okay now the architecture should be evaluated to see that it satisfies the requirement a common approach to do a subjective uh, evaluation is with respect to the desired properties the attributes such as usability are only mildly affected by the architecture then how you know a proposed architecture should be evaluated for these attributes so some attributes like your performance and reliability so for this it is possible to build a formal models or diagrams using techniques like um, queuing networks and use them for accessing the value of your attribute so another approach is procedural so it is a sequence of steps that is followed to evaluate the impact of the architecture on some of the attributes so one such informal analysis approach uses the following steps first what we have to do is we have to identify the attributes of interest for which 
the architecture should be evaluated that means suppose it is a performance reliability availability whatever the quality you know uh, attributes are there so what we have to do we have to ask our stakeholders interest that means in what quality attribute they are interested in we have to get a list of these attributes from your uh, from the stakeholders then whatever the stakeholders give us the quality attributes right so these have to be maintained in a form of table okay first we have to take the interested uh, the non functional quality attributes from the stakeholder then we have to put them in a table then for each attribute an experienced based subject analysis subjective analysis is done to assess the level supported by the architecture now this analysis might mention the level of the each attribute like the performance suppose for example if i take a performance so in that table quality attribute would be my performance then based on the you know experience i can tell like whether the system is performing good average or poor whether the performance is good average or poor or say suppose uh, reliability or security what is the uh, level of it like whether it is excellent or poor or average so in a table we have to mention all these attributes and their for uh, you know uh, values like whether good average or poor now based on the outcome of this analysis the architecture is accepted or can be rejected so once you take all the you know quality attributes from the client you analyze them you give some values to them whether it's performing well poor or average then you submit this to your stakeholders that is the client now your client will decide based on these uh, uh, requirements or the quality attributes they will decide whether to accept your architecture or to reject it if accepted it's well and good if rejected what you have to do is you have to again take those non functional uh, requirements you have to enhance to improve its performance and a performance for all the attributes again then what you have to do after modification you have to resubmit the architecture to the client okay this is how we can have our architecture evaluated okay next we will see about planning a software project till now we had discussed about the architecture next we will study about planning the software project okay now this planning a software project in this we will first see the effort estimation the types of it project schedule and staffing quality planning risk management planning the concepts assessment all those things then project manage or monitoring plan then the last one would be detailed scheduling okay we'll get started with this okay the first thing have you ever planned whatever may be have you done any planning in your life the basic example i could give you is like uh, say suppose you want to reach the college by 9 o'clock in the morning so how do you plan your day then so probably say by 8 8:15 you will be at the bus stand you will take the bus by you know 8:55 say suppose you have reached the college so you would have made some planning before doing all these tasks right so this is a basic example what i can give you or say suppose uh, while preparing for your internals or the externals how do you do so say suppose uh, some exams so you have uh, you will usually you will do a, a prepare a timetable and you act accordingly you read accordingly so you have a plan in picture right okay so the next one is why planning is necessary suppose you have not planned a day we'll take the same example of uh, you know reaching college by 9 o'clock say you were late that day like uh, you got up late and everything was late by 10 15 minutes you missed the bus so what will happen you reach late right so why planning is necessary we say planning is necessary so that we can reach to our goal right then why do you think planning is necessary in software project so we had taken simple examples of your day to day life and we had seen like have you planned why did you plan these all things now why planning is necessary in software project 
can't we do a project without planning if you get the requirements we can directly go on developing it we can test it and then give it to client right why we need a plan plan there so the important things in the software project are like we have to develop at reasonable cost in the schedule and the quality goals of the project must be met a project succeeds if it meets its cost schedule and quality goals so without the project goals being defined it is not possible to declare whether the project has succeeded or not right so we need planning in a software project so this is the main reason why we need planning so that we can tell whether the project is going in a correct path whether we are following the time we are either you know uh, we are into the budget or we have exceeded it for all those things we need planning and this starts before your development and all okay now what is the basic goal of planning the basic goal of planning is to look into the future and identify the activities that need to be done to complete the project successfully and plan the scheduling and resources now this is the basic goal of planning so planning what do you do you look into the future right you are identifying the activities that are needed to complete our project right then what could be the inputs to the planning phase the inputs to your planning activity or the planning phase are your srs requirement specification and the architecture description when you have the architecture and the srs in place then you can start with your planning then what could be the output of it right what are the outputs so the outputs are your project management plan and detailed project schedule okay your project management plan is a document it establishes the project goals on the cost schedule and quality fronts and defines the plans for managing the risk monitoring the project etc then we have detailed project schedule this is another output right so the detailed plan we usually refer it as detailed project schedule it specifies the task that need to be performed to meet the goals the resources who will perform them and their schedule the overall plan it guides the development of the detailed plan which then becomes the main guiding document during your project execution for project monitoring and if we have our plan in place we can monitor and control our project okay then what are the major issues your project planning addresses there are some issues your planning phase that will address so those are process planning effort estimation schedule and resource estimation quality plans configuration management plans risk management and the last one is project monitoring plans so we will see some of these things in the rest of the chapter okay the first one what would be discuss it would be effort estimation so for a software development project your overall effort and the schedule estimates are essential so these are the essential things or the prerequisites for planning your project the effort and the schedule estimates okay now these estimates are needed before the development is initiated so your effort and the schedule estimates are needed as they establish the cost and the schedule goals of the project so without these uh, you know uh, cost and the schedule goals you cannot answer the question such as whether you have completed the project or your project is late or are there are any other any cost overruns you cannot answer these questions so a uh, effort estimation is to be in place so in this effort estimation you are predicting the effort that is needed for your project the effort could be in terms of your cost and the schedule and you can also have like uh, how many resources you need for your project that can also be predicted in the effort estimation then why do we think the effort estimation is important so 
your effort estimation is important why because to check whether you are on track for the project are you in the budget what is allocated to the project or when uh, what what would be the time like when you will complete the project these all questions could be answered only when you have your effort estimation in place there are two approaches for this effort estimation one is top down approach and the one is bottom up approach so we will discuss this top down and the bottom up approach in the next class so before finishing we'll have a quiz the question is what are the outputs of project planning phase you have got 2 minutes of time to answer this one Okay, time up. That's it for today. We'll conclude our session. Thank you.